talking again along the lines of the What's the Difference series. Uh, today, it's going to be Congo vs. USA in all things religion. Religion slash churches. Yes, mm -hmm. so if you want to know the difference, keep, keep on watching. watching. Okay, let's get started. So, if you haven't seen our last video where we talked about the difference in food between Congo and USA, go ahead and uh, we'll link it up here. Click on that and I hope you enjoy it. I know we had fun eating all that yummy food. Yes. So anyway, without further ado, let's get into, into it. Into the video. <laughs> all right, let's okay. go. So the first thing uh, we'll talk about in terms of religion or churches uh, in our experience between Congo and USA is denominations. Mm -hmm. So in the US you can find any kind of belief in any religion and and even when it comes to Christian churches which is both of our background mm -hmm. in the US you can find every denomination imaginable because the nation was founded on freedom of religion. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, in, just in my area, I don't know how many different denominations there are. Every kind you can imagine. You could visit a different church every week and, <laughs> and probably shopping. not visit them all in a year. Yes. But anyway, um, uh, my experience was I grew up in a non-denominational, somewhat charismatic, uh, spirit-filled, uh, you know, very much believe that uh, the gifts of the Holy Spirit are active and functioning today. Mm -hmm. And, and that's different from a lot of other churches. I'm not saying one's right or wrong, mm -hmm. but that's that was my experience. That was what I grew up in. Um, th this area that I grew up in is very, uh, has a very heavy uh, Mennonite Amish influence. Mm -hmm. uh, so Menno Simons and his teachings were very prevalent here. A very um, conservative area. Uh, I would say somewhat strict, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, so that was kind of my background. But the church I grew up in was very um, charismatic, non-denominational, um, spirit, spirit filled kind of thing. Freedom, the spirit to move okay. and do okay. stuff. So what's the difference? You might ask. Uh -huh. For the Congo. difference is that in Congo, um, for, I can only speak from my experiences. So the three predominant religion that I remember are uh, Catholicism, uh, Pentecostal, and then like your ancestral beliefs. Mm -hmm. Now, Pentecostal isn't the same as Pentecostal here, which we'll get into, but it's, it's different, but it's the same. Mm. So Pentecostal in terms of just free to move in the spirit, but not as strict as it might be here. Okay. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I hope it makes sense to you guys at home. <laughs> if it doesn't, just leave a comment below and we'll fix it. <laughs> so yeah, that's kind of what I remember. And so my background would be more charismatic, freedom of the Sp Holy Spirit to move and just, just freedom. So that's kind of my background. My parents, however, were raised Catholic. Um, and then my dad switched over to Protestant. Uh, which is would be like the Pentecostal and, and non-denominational yeah. along those lines. So that's kind of our denominational and our religious or whatever background. Mm. So next we're going to talk about church buildings. Should I go first? Or should sure, you go, go ahead. Go? Okay, so church buildings were not... Let me backtrack. I understand this is 2019 and things have changed and things are changing a lot in Congo. But when I used to live there, churches or church buildings were not a big deal like there are here. Like you gotta have the latest gadgets and your church has to be so big. Mm -hmm. 
the focus was more on just getting together, worshiping, dancing, and, you know, having God talk to you. I'm not saying that the focus isn't the same here, but there is... It's more simple. Yeah, it's, it's a lot simpler, but mm -hmm. here there's a lot more focus, I think, on the building. Material. Yeah. So, yeah, go yeah, ahead. Yeah, that's true. So here, uh, my experience is that to, to have a church, you need to have a nice, modern building, you know, flat screen TVs mm -hmm. in the foyer and coffee ready, because <laughs> you can't do church without coffee. But, uh, <laughs> I mean, I, I love coffee, so don't right. give me We're not one. knocking it, no, but, but it's I'm, just a it difference. It is a difference, yeah. yeah. Um, and some of it's some of it's money. Mm -hmm. You know, there is more money here to mm -hmm. in most places. Mm -hmm. So there's that. Uh, but yeah, so it's very opulent, very you know, comfortable, mm -hmm. you know, nice plush chairs yes. to sit in and, mm -hmm. right, people's comfort is paramount in yes. the church here, yeah. in, in the buildings that we have. You know, we want to go to a nice building. We want to have AC or heat depending <laughs> on the time of year. We want to, we want to have enough room between us and the person next to us, you know. We oh, don't, that's we so don't want funny to be you say that. We want to have space, right? So yes, let me just cut in to yeah. what he's saying. I don't mean to interrupt you, but it just kind of, as he was speaking, I was having memories like where church has started and all these people are coming into the building. Mm -hmm. And I remember it being so crammed yeah, and yeah. just like, there's not, we're not, we don't care if we can smell your BO. Like Ooh. we, <laughs> we just want to be in church. So like rubbing elbows against your neighbor was not a big deal. Like we're just there to praise the Lord. So anyway, go ahead. Not that people so, have BO. I wasn't. So once we reach like 70% capacity, capacity it's like in, in the US, we got to find a bigger <laughs> church. We got to find a bigger building. Yes. Yeah, when you use the term church, you're talking about the building. building yeah. Yes, because <laughs> so, you are the church. Right, but yeah, really, if the people are the church, but right. yeah, in the US, you're, you know, there's a certain comfort level with proximity to other people that's not the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not. So you want your space and comfortability. Yeah. So next, we're going to hit on tithing. Okay. Uh, why don't you go first? <laughs> so tithing in the U.S., uh, there's different ways of doing it. Some churches uh, will have like an offering time, a tithe and offering time, and mm -hmm. they'll pass around a basket through the aisles. Mm -hmm. And the ushers will come up and, and they'll pass these baskets and you're supposed to put your tithe and your offering in there. Mm -hmm. um, I grew up in a church where they had a box, a locked box at the back. And so you could just kind of do it secretly in a way. Mm -hmm. like. Um, and there's different ways to look at it. Uh, if you're offering something to God, you know, should it be part of the praise as a mm -hmm, praise offering, mm -hmm. or should it be done in secret so your right hand doesn't know, your left hand doesn't know what your right, right hand, hand is doing? doing yeah. or, you know, there's different ways to look at it. But there, exactly. so there's a myriad different ways that it's done. You can also tithe online here. Right now, there's tithing online, mm -hmm. which is huge now. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. I'm I'm pretty archaic when I talk about the baskets. <laughs> <laughs> so in the Congo. It's different because we actually tie it into the praise and worship. Mm -hmm. So it's like dancing, people are dancing, walking in mm -hmm. and giving, putting their money in the baskets. I did just speak to um, or text my brother and was like, do you remember tithing back home and stuff? And he reminded me it's, it's similar here. But I remember like my mom, because she lived in the village, um, it was different where because they didn't have like money paper money they brought um crops their crops mm -hmm. and usually it's like in these huge baskets huh. and you would carry it on your head and music is playing you're walking down the aisle to take the um the your tithing into the storehouse of the lord mm -hmm. so i will try and insert a picture or a video here so you guys can watch it <laughs>
things tithing is done in the villages but in the city it's like here you more like here yeah okay. but it is tied into <laughs> praise like it's part of the praise. part of the praise yeah, yeah okay um anyways so next we're gonna speak about pastors unless you had something else yeah, to add okay it. all right okay. let's go so pastors in the u.s uh, they are different depending on denomination. Um, <laughs> most that I knew were very charismatic, very strong leaders, mm -hmm. and um, so the church looked to them for leadership in a very strong way. Now, depending on the denomination you're in, there's a board of elders that have a lot of power, or um, some not so much, where the pastor has more power. Um, but in the U.S., uh, depending where you go, like if you go to a mega church, the pastor is almost untouchable. Um, celebrity. Or if, yeah, almost a celebrity. <laughs> um, and if you go to like a real small church, they're very, you know, down to earth and Some. usually, mm -hmm. usually, you know, you can talk to them and get to know them. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to think as I, far as pastors. I can talk about what I know yeah, from go ahead. the Congo. What's the difference, you might ask, in Congo? What is the difference? What is the difference, though? <laughs> All right, so the difference is that I've noticed, one of the biggest difference is that pastors were, like, revered back home. Huh. Like, you are you weren't, like, scared of them, that you, but, you, like, you gave them, like, too, I felt like too much respect. Okay. Like, you could not question your pastor. What your pastor uh, said went. Um, huh. When your pastor, <laughs> Lord forgive me. <laughs> when um, the pastor, I remember specifically when a pa our pastor came to visit, like my aunt and uncle, and like they were like drinking beer, they like would hide it so the pastor wouldn't see that they were drinking, because the pastor would tell you about yourself. Like that was seen as a sin or like too worldly or whatever the case yeah. might be. So yes, the pastors were revered. Like I said, whatever they said went, you did not question them. Um, almost to a fault, I think. But that's like a huge difference that I noticed. And like I said, things are now changing. Um, because I think that you, oh, the Western world is having a lot influence um, towards the uh, African African churches, yeah. just in in general. Yeah. So yes, there are mega churches now, but I remember pastors coming to your home and like chatting with you, or right. there's an issue with right. in the family. They will talk about it. Like that's what I remember right. in Congo. And again, it could be different now these days, right. but this is what I remember. Yeah, and I'm thinking so. of a few, like we've had a few different pastors that we've right. been in their churches. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking of, you know, the different personalities and ways of doing things. Mm -hmm. Like there was a wonderful Baptist pastor. Mm -hmm. We went to a real small church and he, you know, always wore the suit. Mm -hmm. Everyone in the congregation dressed, you know, accordingly in mm -hmm. suits in this Baptist church. But he, he made an effort to, you know, come and visit us and mm -hmm. he brought... Uh, we had him for supper and he brought some little gifts for the kids mm -hmm. and talked to us about you know his connections in Africa because mm -hmm. you know he mm -hmm. knew that was interesting to us and mm -hmm. then I remember another semi-Baptist pastor he called himself Baptist but um, but he was a little more free in terms of like the thinking mm -hmm. I'm not sure how to put it exactly he was what what's the word more liberal probably mm -hmm. in his thinking and like he came and visited too and he was very evangelistic and mm -hmm. he was all about outreach and mm -hmm. all about like spreading the gospel mm -hmm. and you know he was fun to be around and then i think of this little puerto rican church we visited oh yeah Hispanic that was church. fun that was, that was really nice <laughs> that yeah. was a nice church <laughs> um the, the pastor there was a gal so mm -hmm. i mean you have all these different pastors and she was very much about community, community. and about really hands and feet of Jesus yes. helping the members yes. in the church mm -hmm. and in fact I stayed in the assistant pastor's house for a little while mm -hmm. thank you so much for that that yes. was nice if you're watching yeah. thank you yeah um, because Biname and I needed a spot for me while they were moving like, back she and to... the kids were mm -hmm. staying here mm -hmm. um, so yeah and then and then the, you know the mega church pastor and and that whole thing we went through that as well where where it was a, like a spectacle yeah. yeah, we just encountered a lot of a pastors. A lot, yeah. Um, it's not what I'm used to, so it was right. really like, whoa. <laughs> so can, you know, pastors can run the gamut. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, we'll I, won't, I won't get into what you know, <laughs> all the theology and beliefs on that. No, We're just going to talk we'll about the differences. We'll be here for hours. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe sometime I'll start a little thing where I can just share my thoughts <laughs> that on would the be word. Good, actually, <laughs> comment down below if you would like to see that. <laughs> but yeah, so 
that's kind of what I remember about pastors too. You just mm -hmm. you don't question them mm -hmm. at all. And you mm -hmm. are borderline afraid of them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so prayer and fasting. These are some fun topics, prayer and fasting. So in Congo, when you, <laughs> I was talking to a friend of mine, she's actually recently from, maybe she's been here for one or two years, mm -hmm. and she, I had her over, she was like, Bename, I've noticed like here, you gotta make people pray. You gotta like encourage prayer. Right. That's not the case back home. Well, it's I'm not like, comfortable. Prayer, like, no. prayer, prayer is not comfortable for Americans. Yeah, so know? I just say, welcome to America. <laughs> Shouldn't everything be comfortable? Yeah, no, <laughs> we weren't called to be comfortable. But anyways, back home, not, the more I read the word, I know that now it's probably not biblical, but I understand why it was done. Um, where you would walk into a church, it's prayer time. You won't see people going like this. No, it was like, hallelujah, praise the Lord. And it was all at the same time. So it was like a sound, such a sound that was going out. It, I mean, it gives me chills talking about it because everybody would be praying like in the spirit. Mm -hmm. But so if someone were to walk into that church, they would probably go, oh, they are crazy. <laughs> Everybody was praying and it was like loud. It was like with authority. It wasn't like these you know, quiet, quiet yeah. prayer. It wasn't like mm -hmm. that. So that is like a huge difference yeah. um, back home. Yeah. Okay. And a lot of um, African nations I've noticed also pray. They pray that way out loud and at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. It's common. Huh. So here there's. You might have, um, I've, I've been before where they say, okay, we're going to pray. Yeah. And then everyone like closes their eyes mm -hmm. and no one knows when to open because no one's praying out loud. <laughs> like maybe there's someone leading the prayer or, or whatever, but it's like they did it silently. Right. And so no, everybody's like, is it, so is it time? Open our eyes, yeah. Heathen, don't open your eyes. Or like, who's who's supposed to pray? Like, right. only certain people can, can pray. pray right. Are you holy enough to pray? Right. Um, <laughs> That's too funny. So, so there's that, right? Yes. Um, oh, and then there's like, say we we're gonna do an all night prayer. Oh so, Lord! <laughs> so, so I'm guessing in Congo, y'all gonna stay up all night, and like pray. literally, yeah, on your knees, and awake. Pray. No, mm -hmm. if, now if we plan an all night prayer, <laughs> we mean, okay everyone, we're gonna be here at eight and we're gonna go all the way till 11. So be prepared, I know it's gonna be hard. I'm so sorry, I'm cracking up because that was exactly my experience when we were down south. So all night, I read in the I read in the bulletin board all night prayer. I was like, oh, that's right up my alley, let's go. 
So I'm excited, dressed in suit, uh, sweat suits, uh, sweatpants, right, and just comfortable, comfortable clothing, because right. I know be we're about night. to go in. I get there, and again, people are like, <laughs> what is this? This is prayer. And then at 10.30, okay, let's start wrapping up. I said, oh, bro. <laughs> This is all night prayer. I remember being eight years old and going all night. Prayer was a was and is a huge deal back home. Mm -hmm. People just pray. They see an ant, they pray. <laughs> I rebuke. Somebody sneeze, they pray. <laughs> so we're laughing, but that was like my like it was a shock. I wonder to me. if like, that ties back into the different like religious beliefs. Mm -hmm. So because the ancestral beliefs are so strong there, right. maybe you felt like you needed to pray more against some of these occult type things. Probably, but I'm saying prayer was not something taken lightly right. here. It was right. like prayer was is revered. prayer. It was, yeah, yeah it was like, you, yeah. you're going Which in. leads me into another topic, yes. fasting. <laughs> so fasting in the Bible was not eating, not touching any food, and I think most of the time not touching any drink as well. Correct. No water either. Correct. Um, so here... I'm sorry. Okay, I don't mean to come across disrespectful to people who tithe certain things, but... Tithe. Tithe. Or er, fast. Fast certain things. <laughs> I apologize. It's just the differences that I've seen that yeah, yeah. I was shocked to, right. so I'm responding right. to that. Right. Forgive me. And, and fasting, I mean... The goal is to put away things uh, so that you can focus on the Lord more clearly. You can break break chains and mm -hmm. and see breakthrough mm -hmm. in your life, mm -hmm. and you know have answered prayer. Just draw closer to the Lord. Mm -hmm. But but so back home, you literally fasted, I guess. Yeah, fasting was like we are gonna fast every other day and not eat anything. And not eat anything. It yeah. wasn't like oh we're gonna fast, not going to school or doing our schoolwork right. or not watching TV, it wasn't right. that. It right. was like you went without food. Right. And like I'm would... fasting text messages or... Right, <laughs> right, that was, we right. don't know and what that I mean, is. each person, if there's something in your life that you know is keeping you from drawing close to the Lord, that I think it's good to get that in check. Correct, correct. We're just pointing out the difference. The difference is yeah. fasting meant fasting. You went right. without food or water. Right. So, and that was pretty common, even for like young children, you yeah. just... When it's time to fast, it's time to fast. Right. And like I was asking. If you were fasting, would you guys have like watched something on TV? Yeah. Yeah, because it didn't have anything to do with no. your food fast. No. Yeah. So it that's was... kind of the difference. Like, right. not necessarily right or wrong, just right. that you guys definitely saw it as food and water. Yeah. And over here, it can be anything. anything. Yeah. yeah. You can create your own fast. Have it your way. Right. Have it your way fasting. Okay, Burger King. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, it was. It was fasting. Everybody did it. It was pretty common and it was mm -hmm. on the regular. Yeah. And boy, we fasted. Boy, did we fast. So, All the time, yeah. yeah. Not just because you didn't have food. No. <laughs> the shame, this man. <laughs> Correct. Well, no food today. Lord, we're going to fast. <laughs> <laughs> the little food we did have, no, we fasted, yeah. okay? So yeah, fasting was a big deal. So okay. yeah. So praise time. Mm -hmm. Praise time in the church. So praise, we kind of covered it, but like we did a little, a bit, little yeah. bit. But praise time here, I see like you're radical if you go like this here. It depends on the church. Hallelujah, we bless you, Lord. Okay, back home. <laughs> I think you that depends on the church. Turn my knees. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> I have never seen that. <laughs> I've been to Zambia. I'm joking, but back home, you're into it. You put your soul into so, it. Can you're... I share something? When uh -huh. I when I was in Zambia, mm -hmm. and we, I, I was supposed to go with one other person on my team, mm -hmm. and I, one of us got to preach. That I think it was the other guy got to preach in that church that morning, mm -hmm. and we were like waiting, and the praise team was coming, mm -hmm. and they, I don't know where they had been before they came to the building, but it was just a simple block building, and you could hear them coming. Mm -hmm. The praise team was singing mm -hmm. as they were walking. Walking, and I think they all matched mm -hmm. too. Yep, that yeah. was. Uh -huh. and, and like there was maybe ten of them, and you could hear them coming down the dirt path, you know. Mm -hmm. And they were praising the Lord as they mm -hmm. came in. They were mm -hmm. dancing in, mm -hmm. and they got in the front of the church. And then everybody was, you know, mm -hmm. it was yeah. Everybody got into it. There was no pretenses. You just no. You were just moving and praising. Right. Yeah. All together. Like like yeah. you you moved your body regardless. Yeah. Of, like here, yeah. if somebody's 
jumping up and down. It's like, oh wow, like they're it's radical. They, well, it's radical. They've been touched by the Holy Spirit. Where back home is like that's common to us. Right. Like you look weird not jumping and not dancing back home. So it's like the, the opposite, I guess. <laughs> so yeah, that is praise, praise time mm -hmm. which we enjoy. Okay, another but, another topic is prophecy. Mm -hmm. So um, and and a lot of churches in the U.S. don't even you know believe in the gift of prophecy for today but i grew up in a church that believed that mm -hmm. and the belief was uh for encouragement encouragement edification which i believe is true mm -hmm. but it was very faux pas to touch on any strong correction mm -hmm. um which is different from it's back home different because back home the pastor if they see like a sin in your life or something that's quote unquote coming um that isn't good they spoke on that so it wasn't like only the good things they might encourage you but they'll show you like oh i see a sin of x y and z you need to deal with that um and that is something that like i was used to so like when i would hear prophecies here and it was all good things i was like man <laughs> it's all sugar coated i was like wow that's totally good so yeah. god is just like giving africans some bad prophet <laughs> like it didn't make any sense to me why everything was good right. and like you would know someone was living in sin but do not tell them that like hmm. like like you're not supposed to you're not say supposed anything. to say anything here yeah. but back home no you it was addressed <laughs> and that was pretty normal mm -hmm. so yeah that is prophecy it can be good or bad but it they tell you the bad but they also pray along with you or for you whatever but mm -hmm. it's just it's just different i would say mm -hmm. all right so we ended up with dress code unless you had some well i was actually thinking like children Mm -hmm. How do they handle children? Because like what here, well here, when you come with your kids, the church better have a good oh, nursery, yeah, a good children's a program, good because because we're going to send our kids away mm -mm. from the main mm -mm. Con congregation, and uh, they're going to give you a little number, you might like scan them in or something, and then if your child is problematic, your number will pop up on the big screen, <laughs> and you got to so go back and get them. That is not the case in Congo, in majority of the nation in um mm -hmm. In you better Africa. sit down and better, listen. Yes. The kids, like I said, I was eight years old right. and I was sit, standing right there praying, right. like no special, speaking in tongues. No like, special little no, program for no, the no, kids. No, 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 no. Which I love but, the children's programs. I think it. I think it's fun for the kids. Let you act out. <laughs> what? You could not act out in oh, church yeah. as a child. You yeah. would have a problem because that will speak on that yeah. on a later subject but right. like you were there with your parents there was no there was no children's no. pastor mm -hmm. there was, yeah no I you guess. already i figured there was probably a little something different there. yeah you already feared your parents so act up in church and see what happens <laughs> <laughs> so yeah that's a huge difference right right actually. having said that i don't see any problem with not having a children's program it and was... having the kids in with the adults they can pick up on things too right yeah, yeah i don't know i think it is safe money yeah we don't want the kids to be bored though they can't be bored <laughs> all right so dress code dress code you want to start or should i uh i can okay so here it depends on the denomination when i grew up in the non-denominational charismatic um flow it was pretty free in mm -hmm. terms of what you could wear i mean mm -hmm. i could go to church in jeans and a t-shirt mm -hmm. um i think my family tried to dress nice. Mm -hmm. We didn't wear like suits and all that so stuff. So your mom wouldn't have dressed like this? No. Okay. No, not that. Not in an African dress, no. <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> she, I mean, she dressed nice, but mm -hmm. we didn't dress up oh, like okay. formal or okay. semi-formal or anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then there are some denominations here that you do. Mm -hmm. Like, you know... Um, uh, Baptists Baptist, Baptist, usually Baptist, dress yeah. up, but, mm -hmm. but I've been to, and I'm sure there's others, but mm -hmm. I've been to Baptist churches and fellowshiped with them, and I know that they dressed up some. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So the difference in Congo is that <clears throat> the moms and the wives would be dressed like this, okay? You come into praise the Lord, you gotta look right. <laughs> 
<laughs> you gotta dress up. You gotta dress your best. There was no casual dressing. Like you're going to the house of the Only Lord. The finest. Yes. For so, His Highness. Yes. So <laughs> a lot of women dress like this. Women didn't. I never. I don't remember seeing women in um, pants back home. Like mm. coming to church, it was always a skirt Dresses or a skirt. dress. Oh, okay. Um, and. Yeah, and your sh uh, skirt or dress had to be appropriate. Like you couldn't walk in with something short. Sure, they'll look at you like, can I touch you for a second? Okay. Like, oh. what are you doing? <laughs> there was that type of cor correction that I saw. Like you dare not do something like that. Like walk in with short shorts or something ex like exposing your everything. Mm -hmm. um, but here, one of the differences I noticed when we were going to one of the churches down mm -hmm. south, I told you, I was like, man, I can dress like this. Like, I felt like I was going to the club. <laughs> you didn't dress crazy. No, I didn't, but I'm saying like I walked in and I would see oh, like you two saw tops oh. and like short. Sure, I was like, what is this? So that was a shocker to me. Um, that is, seeing what I saw, I thought, oh, is this normal? Like. Yeah, it was a it was a big shock to me because mm -hmm. I wasn't used to that. But um, okay. yeah, I think that covers all of it. I think we hit all the topics. Yep. Yeah. If if there's any that we missed, you thought we should have addressed, just comment down below and we'll try our best to address it mm -hmm. directly or make a separate video. Um, and if you have further questions or there's a topic you want to know about, what's different in Congo? Pertaining yeah, to let this. us know. Let us know. We would yeah. love to do that. For Comment you guys. for us and we'll respond. Yeah. So thank you guys so much for spending time with us while we talk about the differences. We have fun. Yes. And we love the differences. We love that we are different mm -hmm. and we love that our cultures are different mm -hmm. and we embrace that. Yeah. So keep on watching. Mm -hmm. For we'll, more. Yep. For other videos, we're going to keep going with this What's the Difference series, series mm -hmm. highlighting different things that are different about Congo mm -hmm. and USA. Yeah, and don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe. And as always, keep, keep looking, looking up. up. Yanga